it's a, it's a, it's a very hidden, it's a very hidden phenomenon which acts in a particular time very openly. If you say Bihar has no caste uh, problem, really. Bihar is the hotbed of uh, caste uh, politics. So we, we, we must be very cautious when we make such statements because you, you no longer, none of us, Haryana, Rajasthan, uh, Gujarat, I mean, I mean, if you if you look at what happens in Tamil Nadu, it's just a, a tip of the iceberg. What happens in Bihar, in UP, in Haryana, in Rajasthan, uh, and uh, the the West Bengal question is a very different question. I mean, there is a positive side to it and also a negative side. To it. I mean, you see, actually, we criticized Ashish Nandi to a, 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 in our post <coughs> in relation to what he said. But he also said something that look at West Bengal. Nobody from the lower class has reached the corridors of power. So there is no corruption. He made that comment, you know, apart from making. I mean, uh, that's a wrong statement. We will uh, uh, completely do not agree with that. Not, I mean, that there is no corruption uh, because there is corruption in this way. That's a different thing. Uh, uh, he said, it is the least corrupt states. I mean, I can't understand. If during the left government, if you have to admit your child to a school, you have to go to the party functionary and get his permission in a state, so called democratic state, there will not be exchange of money. If that is not corruption, what else is it? If a person who is raped, to claim that if she was raped, she has to go to Mamta Banerjee's um, uh, office to get a scam, saying that, it, uh, that she was raped, what is it? Is corruption just about the money? That's a different thing. In, in, coming back to the question of the Ashish Nandi, that is, I mean, uh, the second part we were attacking, but the first part, look at the first part. So, it's a very dramatic issue in West Bengal. I mean, if you look at it historically, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a West Bengal specialist, you know, maybe you comrades have a better knowledge of West Bengal. But the thing is, nationalism historically, and also the movement of the left, to some extent, has cut across the caste issue. We don't de uh, uh, deny that to an extent, but there is a, a hidden problem of casteism there. If, I mean, that, that was a very outstanding statement of Ashish Nandi, which we need to research a little bit. That why none of the lower caste people have reached the corridors of power, even within the bourgeois politics. Is it? that uh, the state has gone above casteism, it has solved the caste problem, yes. or it is a denial of the democratic right of the uh, 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 lower caste to reach, uh, even within the bourgeois democratic society, to enjoy some sorts of power. I mean, that's, a, that's a different uh, uh, point uh, uh, altogether. So, when we take up issues of electoral politics, how things will be done. I mean, it's, it's a muddy water. We can't, we can't put our, uh, we can't soil our hands in it. But still, <coughs> when, we, when we have perspectives, when we are drawing our perspectives, we need to take into account what kind of uh, complexities will develop when, when the elections develop, when the elections come to uh, near future. So in that context, in that context, we cannot be very categorical on the results of the uh, elections. In my opinion, it is too early to make any prediction. But at the same time, I would like to say, I would, I would uh, uh, to an extent, not to an extent, to a great extent, agree with the formulation that uh, uh, Anand has come out with, that I cannot see that there is going to be a total turnaround at a national level for a BJP, pro-BJP swing. I can't see that. Because BJP itself is a divided house. There are too many prime ministers within the BJP. 
So that's, that's, a, that's a bit of a problem. And another one thing, the caste question within the BJP is surfacing. It, 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 it's so, uh, they have put a blanket on the caste issue of the BJP, especially they thought once they expelled, uh, or was that Mahabharati, they solved the caste uh, complexity within the BJP. Now it's another thing. I saw an article that why we, uh, Modi is being promoted by a particular caste. Modi is popular because he comes from the OBC. This thing. The counterweight that they have put for, put for is Sushma Swaraj. There is also a cry that Nitish can be made to come around to the idea that Sushma Swaraj will be acceptable because she comes from a socialist background. Earlier she was a socialist in the socialist party. Sushma Swaraj was a socialist. She was a colleague of a, a, a Jack Fernandez at one particular point in time. So she, she's a later in. She's not an RSS sister. Kaya. She was incorporated into the BJP. So some of the old uh, socialist colleagues and uh, the NDA figures are trying for Sushma Swaraj to be put up. Then NDA can uh, can uh, work together as a uh, as an entity and fight the elections. I'm not putting too many eggs in that basket because that may not happen. Because RSS and uh, the power uh, types will put it down because they can't accept, even though they may, be, they may have 101 uh, uh, objection for Sonia Gandhi to be the Prime Minister, they will also not accept Sushma Swaraj to represent the uh, Hindu right wing politics uh, at a national level. They, they, I mean, there are other equations. You know, one, one is that Mohan Bhagavad, it will be too much for him to accept that his party is going to have a, a woman as a prime minister. So there will be a problem. But apart from that, what I said is there are too many candidates within the BJP to become prime minister. So it's not, it's not going to be a very easy thing for BJP to zero in on one prime minister candidate. It's not going to be. There would be, as I agree, I think it was uh, Yuraj who said that there can be a very serious split if, uh, within the BJP if uh, 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 Modi, uh, I mean, I don't know who, who said that, a uh, serious split uh, can develop. It's what was, was it you? Yeah, uh, yeah, you made a very good point there. Uh, so there can be a serious split uh, within the BJP uh, if uh, uh, a forceful. Uh, campaign goes into the Modi becoming the Prime Minister. But at the same time, I don't think, it, I mean, it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not an accident that Rahul Gandhi is pussyfooting towards the power. Uh, of course, one can uh, 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 read it as some sort of a training period and uh, 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 he's getting ready and other things. But it's the, the Congress, even within the top levels of the Congress, they're not sure how Rajiv Gandhi, I mean Rahul Gandhi, will be accepted by the people. It's not because of the, the Congress themselves. You know, the Congress has got a lot of cheerleaders. You know, once Rahul Gandhi said they will put up uh, posters and uh, cutouts and say he's the leader of India. I mean, as if everybody has accepted it. But that's not the case. The biggest worry for uh, Rahul uh, Gandhi's candidature as a prime minister that they can revive, a, they, may, they can give an issue to the BJP to hit the streets. Not because of his experience, not because of anything else, but all this blood theory will come back. They will not be prepared. They, they cannot. They, they will come out with a vicious right-wing campaign against right, Rahul Gandhi, like they wanted to do if uh, Sonia Gandhi had taken the uh, uh, road to become her, her, herself as the Prime Minister. I mean, I think uh, we commented at that time, it was a master stroke on the part of uh, Sonia Gandhi to say, look, I don't want you be. I mean, it was otherwise, BJP, which had no issues, would have got an issue to revive itself. 
It was a very good data. Of course, the diktats of the IMF, the diktats of the imperialism, that, was, that is another story. But within the country, that was an issue that uh, brought in uh, uh, Sonia Gandhi, I mean, not, that did not bring Sonia Gandhi to the uh, uh, to the Prime Minister's uh, candidature. Come let's, in this context of a very volatile situation, I mean, the picture that Yuvraj uh, uh, gave in relation to the economy, the emerging struggles, the kind of uh, opportunities that the, uh, the Marxists will have, this organization will have, and at the same time, the country's the country's nature with which uh, uh, that the Indian political situation is placed in, which uh, Anand explained, it is in this context that we have to grapple with uh, the opportunities that come about. I mean, uh, it's true, many of you may not uh, be aware, especially, I mean, I, I overheard some of the conversations that you had, you were having, you know, Pratap was having in relation to the working class struggles in this country. I mean, somebody was commenting there has been no working class struggles, uh, uh, I mean, not, not, not led by the communist parties, that's a different thing. Over the last, uh, what, is, what is it, you know, in, in 30 years, it has taken a, a, very big, a very big leap of a period that a, a natural upsurge in the working class consciousness to come about. I'm not saying that it is there now. It, will, it may come. I think it will come. Since the defeat of the textile strike in this country, the 250,000 textile workers for 18 months, that particular great strike was defeated in Maharashtra. There has been a, a very big dampener in the general consciousness of combativity, of struggle. And that is the biggest disadvantage that the entire class is playing Playing, I mean, playing now. The rise of communalism, the rise of casteism, regionalism. I mean, we are, we are not commenting on national nationality aspirations. Regionalism and the petty bourgeois politics to come to for one of the main reasons is that the wealth creators of the nation, the wealth creators of the society, their organized expression is next to nil? That's a very big question. So when we, when we say we intervene in the general strike, you know, last time we intervened, <coughs> in a very small way, I mean we did not do anything because we don't, we don't hold the leadership of the uh, working class. <coughs> but for the first time, now, like the last time, the general uh, situation, the political situation in the country has come to us, has come to a situation that unless the leadership of the trade unions and the working class in general think of struggle, think of challenging and putting out an alternative, I mean maybe putting out an alternative is too far a cry at the moment, at least seem to be engaging in struggle, I think their own support is going to be new. It's not an accident that in the last general strike, and in the coming general strike, that the trade union belonging to the Congress is also participating, has, 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 has a, has moved to participate in the general strike. It's not a, it's not a 
just an accident. 